Ah uh, yes, the Glock 19X. What could have been? But is it one of the top five pistols for preparedness purposes? Well, that's a question that I'm about to answer. I'm Magic Prepper and I'm here with Midway USA. And I wanna give you my list of the top five pistols for emergency preparedness. Because not only do they have to be reliable and durable, as well as relatively affordable, but they have to have a really robust logistic supply chain in place so that you can rely on the ability to acquire parts and keep them up and running into a long-term emergency scenario. So let's get started on the list. We'll work our way back. Fifth will be my least likely choice. And then number one will be the choice I would personally make. And then I want all your suggestions as well in the comments below so that we can talk about some other options that might be out there for people, as well as a couple of special mentions I might throw out at the end of the video. So let's get started with number five. Coming in at number five is gonna be the 1911, two world wars. Now, this might not be the best example of a 1911. This is a Kimber Raptor II stainless in 10 millimeter, but it is in fact a 1911. However, I would suggest standardizing to something a little bit less niche. So most likely a GI style 45 ACP 1911 of some sort, or maybe even one in nine millimeter for the logistics of ammunition. But either way, the 1911 was adopted by the US Army in 1911, which means there's been 113 years of supply chain development for the parts and the necessary components for these guns. And you'll find 1911s in every corner of the world. They're everywhere and they've been around for a long time and they're still very reliable very well made pistols now something to consider is that a lot of the tactical and defensive handgun community has actually recently started shifting over towards using double stack 1911s like the staccato 2011s or other similar firearms of that nature and that's because they have an excellent trigger they're a safe design and they just shoot very accurately so a 1911 is number five on my list. Not because I think it's the best option per se, and not because there aren't more modern options that might give you a little bit more versatility when it comes to an emergency scenario, but the 1911 is no slouch. And the parts and the logistics supply chain is most definitely there when it comes to holsters and anything else you could possibly think of, you can find it for a 1911. So let's move on to number four. Number four on this list is gonna be the HK USP. And right here, I've got the USP Compact in nine millimeter, which I think might be one of the better choices, but we'll get to that here in just a minute. Now, the HK USP is one of the most heavily tested pistols ever designed. It's been through numerous trials and it's one of the most reliable handguns ever made. It's extremely robust, very durable, and has a double action, single action firing mechanism, which allows you to not only carry it safely, but also keep pulling the trigger if for some reason you're having an issue, which you can't do with striker fired or single action only pistols. Now, it also has a decocker and safety mechanism here, which allows you to either run it double action where the hammer is down and then requires a much heavier trigger pull, or you can actually cock the hammer back, turn on the safety and run it cocked and locked like a single action, just like that 1911 before. Now, this gun doesn't have quite as robust of a supply chain as some of the other guns on this list, including the 1911, because it's slightly more niche, but it has been adopted by law enforcement and militaries all over the world, and it's still in current production, which is a testament to just how good this pistol is. It's still being made to this day, even though HK has already moved on to other variants of this pistol when it comes to the P2000 as well as the P30. So. Another thing about this pistol is that it doesn't really benefit from some of the more modernized features we see on a lot of guns today, like having the ability to mount red dot optics or run a flashlight that's not proprietary, but there are workarounds now and you can actually get all those things for this pistol at this point in time. You get adapter rails for the proprietary light rail here. You can get your slide milled for a red dot sight. So you can easily bring this pistol into the modern era without issue while, while still benefiting from this rock solid design. So the HK USP is excellent. Now the USP compact and nine millimeter particularly interests me. And here's why. The magazines are actually steel as opposed to polymer like the normal USP and 45 and 40 Smith and Wesson. And the reason that's so cool is because it accepts VP9 magazines. And the VP9 is the most current production pistol that HK makes. So with an X grip adapter, 
you can actually use 17 round VP9 magazines in here and get a flush fitting full size grip with the compact model. And then you also benefit from the fact that the magazines are in current production and likely to be in production for quite some time as the VP9 is just continually getting more popular, especially now that they've adopted red dot optics that come with the firearm from the factory. And we all know that law enforcement and militaries around the world are also using the VP9. So rock solid reliability, bomb proof design, and a supply chain that works when it comes to magazines and future production. Not to mention that, yes, you can get holsters and everything else for this gun as well. Not quite as easily as some of the other guns on this list, but this is, I guess, yeah, the only gun on this list that hasn't been used widely by the military here in the United States. So what does that mean? Well, it means it's time to move on to number three. Number three on the list is going to be the Beretta M9, or the current iteration of that, which is the M9A4 that I have right here. And this pistol has a lot going for it. Very similar to the HK USP, it's a double action, single action pistol chambered in 9mm. And of course, the M9 was adopted by the US military in 1985. And this pistol, or the M9 variant of this pistol, served in the US military for 32 years which is a huge reason why it's number three on this list. Not only do we benefit from the huge, robust supply chain that was created during those three decades of service, but we also benefit from all the testing and data done by the US military during that time. And what that's allowed us to do is come back to the drawing board and have Beretta enhance some of the ergonomics and other features that we now have here in the M9A4, like being able to mount red dot optics, having weapon mounted lights, and having a grip that's a lot more accommodating for the average shooter. And I can't tell you enough just how comfortable this gun is in my hand. It feels amazing. It's an excellent shooting pistol, extremely accurate and very reliable. And it would make an excellent sidearm for any long-term emergency scenario. Then it also has all of those logistics going for it in the sense of military surplus when it comes to holsters, magazine pouches, or anything else. And you also have the fact that M9s are still in service to this day. They haven't been fully replaced. So there's armories all over the country where M9s are currently sitting. We also know that they're being used by law enforcement and other agencies as well. And of course, they also have a lot of popularity from Hollywood, thanks to movies like Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. So who doesn't like that? But the only thing that makes this pistol number three on this list instead of maybe number two, or I don't even know, maybe number one, is its weight, which is probably the main reason it was replaced in the military, because there's nothing else I can find that would require this being replaced. This is an excellent, excellent handgun. But it is heavy and it is large. And because of that, it makes it difficult to conceal carry. And in a long-term emergency scenario, I think concealed carry could become very important. I conceal carry every single day, even in a time of peace, right? But I wanna be able to carry it without printing. I want it to be lighter weight if possible, and I need to be comfortable. And it is hard for a lot of people out there to carry a gun of this size, right? Now I'm six foot three and 210 pounds. So I can carry this gun, but it's still not as comfortable as other guns that I have. And as a duty weapon, outside of the waistband, this is an amazing gun. It just doesn't do concealed carry very well, and it is a little bit more weight to lug around. Because of that, it's number three on this list. But that's the only reason. Everything else it has going for it. Like I said, logistics, reliability, durability, accuracy, shootability. This is an excellent, excellent pistol. And you would definitely not be making a bad decision by picking up a Beretta M9A4, M9A3, M9A1, even just a, a standard Beretta 92. Whatever it is you want to get, they're great, great handguns. But that being said, let's move on to number two. All right, so in at number two, we have the SIG M18 or M17, whatever floats your boat. But I personally like the M18 size and form factor better for reasons of concealed carry and because it's a little bit less weight. Now, the M18 and M17 were adopted by the US military in 2017. So it's the new kid on the block, but it has been around now for seven years, which has allowed SIG to make some necessary improvements, especially when it comes to safety, because there were a couple issues in the very beginning, which we have finally started to work our way out of, but there's still some questions around it. However, 
The M17 and M18 have a manual safety, which was a requirement by the military, and they're optics ready out of the box. They come with night sights, and they actually have a pretty decent trigger. And with all those features, you actually get a lot for what you pay for when it comes to buying an M18 or an M17. Now, the other thing to consider is that this is the current sidearm of the US military. So the logistics supply chain is 100% there. It is expanding every single day. Now, holsters, magazines, everything is highly available, but still a little expensive. These magazines are not cheap. And compared to some of the other guns that we discussed today, uh, they're probably the most expensive. And that can be problematic. But at the same time, if you get a few magazines and you feel good about it, the rest is really easy to access. And because of the US military's adoption of this striker fired nine millimeter, which is exactly what this pistol is, well, you can count on that logistic supply chain to just continually expand as time goes on. Now, I will say one cool feature about this gun is that it's modular. And what does that mean? It means that the trigger pack is actually the serialized part of the firearm. So it's called the FCU or the fire control unit. And you can remove that from this grip frame and switch it out to a completely different grip frame if you'd like. So let me get an example for you really quick. So here's an example of the customization and modularity of the P320 platform, which the M18 and M17 are built off of. This is a Wilson Combat WC P320 grip frame, and then this is a different fire control unit, but I could have easily swapped the fire control unit in the last frame into a similar frame to this one, as long as it was cut for a manual safety. And then I have a different size pistol. This is actually a compact, so flush fit would be 15 round magazines. And then this allows me to change the ergonomics and change the size and all types of things that would fit me better as a shooter. Or I can buy one pistol, like the M18 for example, and then I can go buy a compact grip module and throw that fire control unit in there. And now my full size grip has just changed into a compact grip, which means I can now conceal carry it easier or whatever it else it is I want to do. So the modularity on this gun is exciting and is something that I actually enjoy quite a bit about it, which is why it's number two on the list, because it has the military backing, it has the logistics supply chain, it has the modularity to make it fit whatever a shooter might need from it. You can buy one P320 and have five different guns, right? And then of course, with the, let's just say, generational changes from this platform that have made it safer than it was before. And if you wanted to maintain that manual safety, I think a lot of the safety concerns might not be eh, what they used to be, let's just say. So the main thing though, in all honesty, is that the military is using it and law enforcement all over the country is using it. Because of that, you're going to find parts, you're going to find magazines, you're going to find what you need if you got to keep yours up and running. But there is one gun that just does it better than every other one on the list. And it's pretty obvious what it is, I think. So number one on the list is the Glock 19X. Now you can swap this out for the Glock 19, the Glock 17, the Glock 45, whatever iteration you wanna swap it out for, totally fine because it's still a Glock and it's still built off the same system. Now this is the gun that Glock tried to get the US military to adopt. Now I'm sure that there was reasons why that didn't happen, mostly related to cost, right? But this is an excellent firearm, but not for any other reason than extreme reliability and logistics, right? Let's be honest. Is this the best looking gun on this list? Definitely not. Is it the most ergonomic gun on this list? No. Is it the most accurate gun on this list? No. Does it have the best trigger? Definitely not. What does this gun have going? Can I even put a red dot sight on it? Not this particular model. So why is it number one? Well, first off, the robust logistics of Glock. Every company makes a holster for Glock, either the 19 or the 17, which this would be for the 19, right? And just so you're aware, the 19X is a 19 size slide on a 17 size frame, which is what I personally prefer because my larger hands appreciate that grip and the shorter slide makes it a little bit easier to conceal carry. That's just my experience. So every single gun manufacturer out there that makes pouches or holsters or 
I mean, almost anything has something for Glock. If a brand new holster comes out on the market, you're pretty guaranteed that it's going to be able to fit a Glock 19 before any other gun out there, right? Glock just has a logistics game one. Oh, did I mention that the magazines are two thirds the price of almost every other magazine that I showed you today? That's right. So not only are Glocks economically better when it comes to logistics, but the availability is through the roof. And of course they're used by the military in some capacities. They're used by police. They've been around for decades. The action has barely changed at all over the years. It's a reliable, robust system that just works when you pull the trigger. And it's one of the few guns that right out of the box you can rely on. And that's just been my personal experience after owning many, many Glocks throughout the years. And this is a gun that I don't want to like. It's boring and it's ugly and it doesn't fit my hands all that great. But when I pull the trigger, it goes boom. And when I carry it, I feel comfortable knowing that I have a reliable firearm, that I can get parts for cheap, that I can work on myself, and that I could find magazines for almost anywhere I go, including my local hardware store. Do you think they have SIG P320 magazines? They do not. Do they have Glock magazines? They certainly do. Why is that? Because that's how ubiquitous this gun is. And that's why it's the number one pick for preparedness. And I know it's the obvious answer and it's boring to say so, but it's just the truth. You can't beat it when it comes to logistics, reliability, functionality, and it just works. I don't know what else to say. It's a good gun. I shoot Glocks well, I like this gun. It's not my favorite gun, but it's the gun I would grab if I had to walk out of my door and never look back. And that's what Glock brings to the table that none of the other ones do. It's it's hard to dethrone this one. It really is. So let's do it. Let's talk about a couple of special mentions. Okay. A couple that I would probably add to this list without feeling bad about it would be the Smith and Wesson M and P those, especially the two series have been regarded as very reliable, good shooting handguns. I think they're very ergonomic. I don't have a lot of time shooting them, but I have shot some before and they're good guns. I haven't had any issues. Another honorable mention would be the CZ 75. It's been around for a very long time. It's very reliable, very flat shooting, and a lot of people really enjoy their CZs. Now you tell me what I was missing off this list or any other honorable mentions you would like to add down in the comments below. Hopefully this gave you some things to think about when it comes to trying to purchase a firearm for self-defense, especially related to preparedness purposes. Um, if I had to suggest one, this would be the one because it's gonna be more affordable for you when it comes to magazines, holsters, and everything else you can think of. And it's gonna work for you without you having to think too hard about it. And if something breaks, you can probably fix it yourself on your workbench at home without having to do anything too crazy. So it's really hard to beat Glock when it comes to that. Anything else you need from me, reach out, feel free to say hello. I appreciate Midway USA allowing me to put this content out over here on their channel. And hopefully we can do more of this in the future.